Hello there my little kittens. This video is in response to a bit of a brouhaha on the Storm of War Discord over the last 24 hours or so and this problem arose from discussions about damaged warbirds in DCS and the fires in particular. The thinking being that some or all of the modules are not behaving as one would expect when they are on fire and in some cases the fire doesn't seem to actually be doing anything at all to the pilot or the aircraft despite visually being raging. So we decided, Burrito and I, to sit down and do some controlled testing of some of these fire effects and what was going on. Here are some summary points from our testing. I'm going to go through these in more detail throughout the video, but just to summarize. Number one, fires are almost impossible to set on parts of the aircraft which do not have fuel in them. Number two, empty fuel tanks do not burn, at least in our tests. They didn't burn. Number three, the location of the fire does appear to be lo matched to the location of where the aircraft was being hit. Number four, fires which are closer to the cockpit kill the pilot much faster. However, there seems to be either some kind of binary or curve attached to how it's calculating this. This is going to be a big topic in the video. We can't confirm if there are fuel losses occurring from the fires. And lastly, there doesn't appear to be any additional damage from the fires. That is, the fires are not spreading and burning, melting and destroying other parts of the aircraft. So let's get into the detail. Okay. So we're going to set this 109 on fire by aiming for the fuel tank. Let's do it now. And then Burrito's going to report what happens. There's the fire. Okay. Nothing yet. Okay, first flash in here. It's going grey. Going grey. Dead. Dead. Pilot is dead. Yep. And has it thrown you to the external views yet? Not yet. So, BF-109, second attempt, aiming for the fuel tank again. Fire now, you're on fire. fire. You've yeah, seen it? fire straight away. Okay, yep. good. Starting to go grey. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're dead. Okay, that was considerably more. Yeah, and it was and it was a more gradual fade as well. And and I'm kicked outside. So another set of tests on the 109. Here we go. Okay, fire. Fire on my left. fine at the moment I can still see the flames on my left behind me yeah from my perspective the flames are on both sides of you at the rear engulfing your cockpit basically yeah for me yeah I can see them both sides but uh, behind me they kind of come forward to the back of the seat if that makes sense yeah you know, behind the, seat. Uh, this actually could be the back part of the fuel tank that's on fire the rear part yep. of the fuel tank Okay, this is a bit ridiculous now. Yeah. I mean, certainly yeah, visually, ir irrespective of what is um, damaged, visually, there's just no way a human being would survive what, what I'm looking at. It's, it's no okay. way. You are engulfed in flames. I mean, even if you were just on the edge of them, it would be so hot in there. Your body would be, yeah, exactly. it's three, four, 300 degrees, I would say, in there. It's just, this is, and this is why people are complaining when they see this sort of thing happening. 
Can you just hold your brakes on but throttle up? Manipulate your control surfaces. Yeah. Okay. It, everything works, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, this is definitely a problem. So that's exactly the same place I shot at you last time. I'm going to walk it forward underneath the pilot seat. About there. Here we go. Firing. Okay, fire now. Yeah, fire straight away. Okay, is it visually further forward? The flames yes. are slightly further forward. Yep, you're more yeah, of your pilot. Dying. You're dying? Ah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. So it's possibly the rear section of fuel tank when it catches fire. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Well, I think we might have found the problem. Yeah, so it's, so, so it's whenever you get fires somewhere that's further away from the pilot that it's not killing the pilot. Yeah, I'm aiming for the top of the number six um, on the left. So this has got a full rear fuel tank. So aiming now. Okay, you've got a fire. Yep. Yeah, I've got a fire. I can see outside. That looks to be a little bit further back than the last one. But it's kind of difficult to tell. The flames are, again, they're, they're flames are roughly behind my seat. Yes, they are. For the score your, the yeah, your pilot's in about the front fifth of the flame, just. Yeah, visu visually, I'd be sitting right on the front edge of it. Yeah. You know, for me. Yeah, that's about the same as what I'm seeing. It's gradually, it's very slowly going grey. Really, really slowly. And now it's gone black. You're dead? Okay. Okay, so this time I've moved the cursor from here, where it was before, where we started the fire, to about there, just in front of the six on the aeroplane. Same situation, we have filled up the rear fuel tank in the Mustang. So it's got lots of fuel, and we're going to see if the fire slightly closer to the pilot kills him quicker. No fire. Nah, I'm not hitting the fuel tank. There! Okay, I've hit the fuel tank. Yeah, I can see the fire. And now, is that closer to the pilot? Not really. I yeah, for me it is. It, oh, you know, yeah, me, maybe a bit. You know, I'm right yep. on it. Okay, you're in it this time? All right, let's see how long it burns for. Before it kills you. No, I'm starting to go grey, now I'm dead. Oh, that was quicker. Okay, that was much quicker. All right, so I'm pretty happy that there is a... The amount of time the pilot survives for is definitely related to how close to the pilot the fire starts. Do you agree? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Okay, now we're going to aim for the wing tanks on this P-51. The rear tank is empty, so let's aim for the wing tanks and see how long the pilot survives when they're burning. Fire. There's one from our, yeah, I can see the fire. We've got a wind from right to left, so that should be the most favourable sort of conditions. Now, it's only just licking the edge of the canopy. Ah, I just saw progressive decals appearing on the side of the canopy. Yeah, now I'm, now I'm feeding, now I'm dead. You're dead. Okay, that wasn't that long. Yeah, yeah, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Okay, so moving the thing left just a slight fraction, the trigger or the crosshairs, aiming for. Okay, new wing fire. To me, that doesn't look like it's licking the uh, canopy. Okay, let me have a look here. Yes, that is further out. There's there's a gap. A bit of a bit more of a gap this time, so the fire is located slightly further out along the wing. You've already survived longer than last time. Yeah, well, there, there, there's definitely a distance thing in it. Yeah, I think, I think it would be worth looking at the. It's just just started going grey, and it's just gone blank. Okay, so a bit longer, but still not a huge amount of time. Now we're testing with the P-47, both fuel tanks are full, one forward of the instrument panel and one under the pilot's seat. I'm going to get the one in front of the pilot burning first. There, okay. That's the fire to me. So that is the fire in front of the pilot, so it's, it's outside of the cockpit. 
And we tested this earlier and it pretty much had no effect on the pilot. So we are hoping that uh, for the sake of consistency that that is the same again. Yeah, from my perspective I can see flames covering the entire engine and they look to progress rearwards um, basically to the canopy arch. Okay, let me get a bit of view here, yeah. So that was that was forward of the cockpit. Now my, my thinking is that DCS is DCS is coded to assume that has no effect on the pilot, which seems to be the case. Any effect on you yet, Burrito? No, none. None. It's not emptying out the fuel. I mean, this will just keep burning and burning and burning, so it doesn't seem to be consuming fuel. And there is a lot of fuel being burnt there, but it's not stopping the fuel flow by as far as we can see. Now I'm going to aim for the fuel tank under the pilot. So there'll be a second fire and things will change dramatically. Here we go. Okay, there you go. There's uh, the second fire. fire. The rear. Yep. So now I've got flames coming right around the, the entire cockpit. Yeah, now the entire cockpit is engulfed in flame from my view as well. Nice fading. Nice black. And you're black and you're dead. So there we go. That is pretty good evidence of what is going on here with the fires in DCS. There does seem to be some evidence here that the distance from the pilot is influencing how long it takes the pilot to suffer from the effects of these fires, ranging from about 10 seconds till death when the fire is immediately adjacent to the pilot's seat, particularly if the fuel tank is under the seat, to around 30 seconds when the fires are starting just a bit further back or strangely on the on the wings in the Mustang. And then, weirdly, as soon as you get beyond that kind of immediate range, the MW50 tank seems to be able to burn for a long time indeed, with very little impact, and so does the forward fuel tank on the P47. So I think there are two possible explanations for this. The first explanation is something quite binary. For example, DCS has a code that says, is the fire in or next to the cockpit? And if yes, then death time is fast. And if no, then death time is very long or perhaps non-existent. I don't think that's what's going on. I think it's something more like a distance scale with an exception or something different going on for the MW50 tank in the 109. What I think is happening is that the further the distance from the pilot, then the longer it takes for the pilot to die from the flames. However, I think the shape of the curve may be a bit problematic, which is explaining why fires less than a meter away in front of the pilot or behind the pilot are almost having no effect at all. So I think adjusting that curve so that the maximum time is around a minute and perhaps the minimum time is this 10 to 20 seconds range would just make a bit more sense. In addition to that, I'm hoping that we soon see progressive damage from these fires occurring on the aircraft so that a fire at the back of the aircraft will eventually disable components that go to the back of the aircraft. And then this whole issue of pilots dying quickly won't be such a problem anymore because the aircraft will become unflyable due to other progressive damage anyway. Just to further complicate matters, this is the TRK file being played back from the sequence at the start of this video when I showed the burning 109 on the runway. As you can see in the TRK file, there's no fire. So we can never be quite sure whether all of this is simply just effects being in the wrong place or whether there is actually a problem with the DM because there's no sign of the fire in the TRK file. 